Well, good afternoon. Today is Tuesday, November 7th. Today would have been my father-in-law's 96th birthday. He's been gone a long time, though. He died in 2000. Way too young. He was way too young when he passed. But that was my only birthday today. But we have an anniversary today is John and Heather's anniversary. Her channel name is Nitty Freckles. I told you I love that name. But John and Heather, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy, 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 happy anniversary, happy, 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 happy anniversary. Well, I hope you have a great anniversary. Uh, I had to drop Alyssa off this morning to get her hair done. They didn't have school today because it's voting in Michigan. And uh, they closed the schools because that's where the voting booths are and all that polls. But anyway, after I dropped her off at her place, I went over to my place to get a haircut. Let me show you my haircut. I take my hat off. I got hat. Got hat hair right now. But there's my haircut. It's a... Uh, it's okay. The girl, she talked nonstop. <laughs> I, I feel bad because I didn't, you know, I talked to anybody. I can talk to anybody, but I just didn't have anything to talk about. And I felt like I was in the middle of a men's only club. I called ahead, but all these men didn't call ahead. And so I called before I dropped Alyssa off, and they told me it'd be a 20-minute wait. So by the time I dro picked up Alyssa, dropped her off where she had to get her hair done and then go over to where mine was, I walked in, and I was up high on the list. And there was five guys sitting there, two guys in the chair already, and two men had walked in. And I thought, oh, my gosh, is today men's day, and I didn't know it, and I shouldn't have been here? Oh, somebody's calling me. I'll be right back. Well, no, I won't. She can just go. It's Christy. She'll... I, I don't know how to switch over because I got the microphone on and that's just all big rigmarole. So I'll just call her when I get home. Um, anyway, so all these guys were there. The only thing I could think of is that hunting is next week. Maybe they want to get their hair cut for before they go hunting. I don't know. But it was like full of men. So I think they looked at me and then they thought, oh, i got to have a woman. She's probably not going to. I'm a very good tipper. I'll give myself, I'll pat myself on the back. I'm a very good tipper. And so I'm sure they looked at me and thought, oh, it's a woman. They don't tip really well. We get a stereotype, don't we? Anyway, she did a really good job. She did. A, she listened to everything I said. She did everything exactly like I said I wanted it done. I have so many colleagues, it's kind of hard to cut my hair anyhow. And I don't like a bang, so it was kind of hard to have it go back and have it feathered and all that good stuff. It'll grow in. I'm going to um, my best friend's daughter's wedding next Saturday, so I wanted to get it cut this week so that it would kind of grow in and set settle into a place like it should be. Um, so anyway, I just dropped Alyssa off back home. Her hair come out really nice. She went to this other place last time to get the exact same thing done. And they charged her with the tip and everything. It was $250, which I, it just killed me to pay $18 to cut my hair. <laughs> but then that, that's with the tip. I gave a $4 tip. So, I mean, it was regularly $14. And I'm thinking, oh, that was a lot. And she paid like $250 the last time she got it done. But she couldn't get an appointment there, so she went to a different salon. And I have to tell you, it looks way better than it did at that other salon. And they only charged her $90. I said, you got to go back to this place, Alyssa. She says, oh, I'm not going back to the other place. She says, that's, now that I have to pay for it myself, because see, her mom always paid for it before. But now that she has a job, she's got to pay for these things herself. She says, I'm going to go back there. So, um, I'm a spoiler alert, if you don't want near it, just go, la, 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 la. But Matt won the first round of the, uh, HOH thing, which I'm really happy about. But Jag and uh, uh, Bowie Jane are still conspiring against them. It's funny how it's okay for them to uh, strategize and, you know, communicate their desires and campaign. That's the word. It's okay for them to campaign, but when Felicia was doing it, she was annoying. It was like, did you not ever watch the game? This is part of the game. So tonight's going to be boring because they'll show a little bit of the competition, I know. But then it's one of those recaps 
thankfully survivor got rid of it you know when they would walk with the torch and then they go oh yeah i remember sandy she used to do this and oh i remember her blah 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 boring well tonight the tonight they'll probably show them having their dinner and then reminiscing about people and supposedly showing you things that you never saw boring boring so and then thursday's the finale and the dilemma of the basement is still going on. Believe it or not, I am getting annoyed, so annoyed that, um, what do you call it? The I'm still waiting for my final payment of $2,400 that was approved last Thursday. And I have left, without exaggeration, nine messages with the person that's handling my claim that's supposed to issue the final payment. Although when I look online, I see that it has been approved. I've done all the steps that I need to do on my end to make sure that I get my payment. It's just a matter of her pushing a couple buttons and, and clearing it so that it gets approved for me, which she's not done. So then I started calling my agent and I left for him, no exaggeration, five messages. And yesterday when I called and they told me they had to leave a message, I said, oh, hell no. I'll wait on hold. I'll put you on speaker. I'll go about my business doing whatever I need to do. I'm going to talk to this man because I'm fed up. So then I was on hold for about five minutes. And then he comes on and, you know, and I told him, I said, you know, I've, I've left you numerous messages. They keep telling me you're going to call me back and you don't call me back. I'm not being informed. And he says, well, I have some personal business I've been attending to. And, you know, not that you need to know, but, you know, I have a family member dying of cancer. And, you know, like, and so I said, you know what? I don't need to know your personal business. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is when they're telling me you're in a meeting, when you aren't even there is a downright lie. And I'm getting very annoyed with you. And I said, and I don't understand why this is so difficult for you just to call me back. Why can't you just call me back? Or why can't somebody say, I'm sorry, but he's dealing with some issues right now and he can't come to the phone right now. Can I take a message and can I help you? Oh, we got into a screaming match. We really, well, I, yeah, because he was yelling at me too. You know, I mean, I was, I was rude. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie. I was rude. I really was because between the claims adjuster and you, I have left 15 messages and nobody calls me back. It's annoying. And you get an automated call. I hate when they, I liked it better when you had an operator. I was just so fed up. So then I called again this morning. Well, guess what? He's in another meeting. Like, you know, I've never seen, anytime I've ever gone in there to pay a bill or anything, there's not a soul around. And all of a sudden, when I got to get a hold of him, he's in all of these meetings and he can't ever get to the phone. So then they said, well, he's going to call you back at, at 12 o'clock. He just called me back right now. It's 123. Just call me back. So that was an awful long meeting just to tell me that uh, he's going to send an email to them and uh, I should uh, know something more tomorrow. I should have my money by now. I should have my money. I know I wasn't going to pay these my basement people right away anyhow, but now it's just the point that I'm just aggravated. And I'm so aggravated to the point that once I get my, I like State Farm. That's who I have. Up until this point, I've always liked State Farm. They've given me the best rates. I've been with them for years and years and years. I, I think I've been with them since the 80s. But the place that I'm at is my original place from when I lived in Clinton Township, which is a little bit of a drive. It's about a 17, 18 minute drive to get to there. And not that I have to drive there. I can just do my payment online and stuff like that. But uh, I am so aggravated to this point that as soon as I get my check, I'm switching agencies because he'll lose a customer that way. And that's the only way he's going to learn. And I feel bad that he's dealing with some personal issues and stuff like that. But you, you shouldn't let your business suffer. It'll have somebody else handle some of your problems for you. I'm just so pissed. I'm just like beyond upset. <sighs> okay, we're done with that rant. <laughs> anyway, um, what, a, what was I going to tell you? I did go to McDonald's this morning. I had a sausage biscuit with a hash brown and a Coke. It tasted so good, though. I really did. And I tracked it afterwards. Oh, my gosh. I used, like, I think it was, like, 37 points just for breakfast. It was it was discouraging, to say the least. It really was discouraging to think I let myself. And I and it's just all this frustration over this basement, and I turned to food, and I, and I recognized that. I just, I, I just, um, my, like, I let my over, my frustration overcome me. I really did. But, and then, uh. I told Jim, I said, well, 
I have some more trash bags. Why don't we go finish doing the leaves in the backyard? And he says, no, I'm going to wait till next week. Okay, so I just want to get the leaves. I mean, we still got leaves on the tree, I guess, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Got to wait anyhow. But anyway, I, I'm back again, up and down with my weight. Um, I really haven't been doing the greatest the last couple of days. Now that my stomach doesn't bother me, I started eating again, which is not good. Which is good, but not good. And I'm just getting... I'm, I'm falling back to my evil old ways, and I don't like that. I just really don't. I, I want to lose weight for my cruise, which is in May. We're going to go to Alaska. We've already put the down payment, the deposit down for that. So I want to lose weight for that. But sometimes I just... I, I the, the 1.2 gain last week really threw me for a loop. It really threw me for a loop. I know in my heart of hearts it really wasn't um, a true gain. And I know that I should, I, my clothes are still feeling somewhat, you know, my clothes are still a little tight because I still kind of feel a little bloated, kind of like, I don't know, I can't describe it. It's just, it's just, I'm, I'm, at, I'm discouraged once again. I'm just being honest. I'm just discouraged once again. I'm not giving up. I'm not quitting. But uh, my clothes fit me comfortably enough. But it's just, you know, I, it's, it's. It's, I don't know, it's just, it bother, it's bothersome for me. It really is bothersome for me that uh, I'm, I'm once again all consumed with losing weight. And I'm, I'm really proud of how far I've come. I am proud of the fact that I still have kept almost 50 pounds off. But I always, always, and I always tell myself don't, but I always, always think, well, you know, at one point you lost 96 pounds. When I'm having difficulty walking, because it's so hard to, you know, because I'm carrying the extra 50 pounds that I lost already. And I remember, you know what, it was so much easier when I didn't have that extra 50 pounds. And then I get on that loop again. And I know I'm beating myself up again. And I would never talk to anybody else like, you know, like let anybody talk this way about themselves. And let's look at me going on, rattling on. And it's all, and it really is. And I can pinpoint it. It's just the frustration of this damn basement. It's just... I mean, it's all done. Everything's done down there. It looks really nice. It's all very comfortable. The David put the TV stand together yesterday, and so the TV's down there now. And the kids actually were over the other day, and they were downstairs, and they loved it better than being all cramped in the back bedroom. They have a lot more room to spread out. And we have a pool table down there so they can play pool. But uh, I just want to get everything resolved. I just... But, you know, that's the way life is. Nothing is always, like, wrapped up in a nice little neat little package. And it's, here you go, perfect. I wish I wish life was perfect, but life just isn't perfect. And it's just not. And uh, I try to stay happy, but, you know, like, there's so much going on. And I'm worried about Jim. I really am. He is taking this somewhat seriously. And I love him, love him, love him. Let me get this, let me say that from the get-go. I love him, love him, love him. But this is the first time since the pandemic that we're together. It seems like every minute of the day. It's like we're always together. And I liked it better <laughs> when we had our time apart. And Jim liked it too. I mean, you know, you can't be with somebody for like almost 60 years. We've been together, what, 56 years, right? 67? Yeah, 56 years. Been together 56 years. And so it's just... It's, it's hard. It really is hard. It's, it's, I mean, I love them. I don't want to sound like I don't, but I liked when I didn't have to worry about making dinner. I, I don't mind cooking, but I don't like the feeling that it's my job to cook dinner. Jim can cook dinner. And last night even, I, we had hamburgers for dinner, and I even told him like at 5 o'clock, I says, I'm not going to make dinner, uh, if, but there's hamburgers in there if you want to make a hamburger. And then he said, no, I'm just going to have a sandwich. And I said, okay, fine. And then it got to be like quarter after six and I was getting hungry and I thought, I'm just going to make the hamburgers. And it was just like, I think he knew that I would just make them. <laughs> yeah, I just, I don't know. I don't know. Go figure. Go figure it. I don't know. I can't figure it out. So anyway, I've started reading my book <laughs> for the book club on Thursday. It's 325 pages and I really like it. I really like it so far. I'm only, I started it this morning before I, I dropped Alyssa off, and then when I came home, I started reading it. I think I'm almost to page 102, something like that. 
But I really do like the story, so it's not going to be a chore to finish it. But I didn't read the first book, like the prequel to this, because I thought I won't have time. But uh, I really do like the book. It's called The Book Woman's Daughter, I think it's called, something like that. Anyway, but I am enjoying it, and I'm going to look forward to that. I'm still tossing around um, going to the meeting on Friday morning to get myself weighed. And then uh, just going from there. I, like I said, I, I am proud of how far I've come. I'm discouraged, disappointed in myself. But, um, and if I had to do it all over again, I'd still have that McDonald's sausage biscuit. I couldn't tell you the last time I had a sausage biscuit from McDonald's. And I loved it. Loving every minute of it. Because <laughs> it, was, it was really, really good. Too high in points, too high in fat, too high in sodium. All of this stuff. All of that stuff. But it just... And it's sad to say, but it just filled a need in my soul that I needed. Not my soul, but my, I don't know, in my being. that I just needed it. For some reason, I just needed it. And, uh, and I have no regrets of having it. So as long as you have no regrets, you're always going to have regrets in life. You always think, well, if I would have done this, I would have done that. But if you would have just made one small change in your past, today wouldn't be the same. It would be a completely different outcome on your life. It would be completely different. So you can't look back with regrets. And I don't look back with any regrets in my life. I feel bad that I was overweight my whole life. I'm still overweight. Um, but uh, I, I, I've had a good life I, and I have a good life. And so I know that I'm probably just ranting. I should have named me Rose. Ramblin' Rose. <laughs> Because I am kind of rambling right now. But uh, anyway, I have no regrets of my life. I really don't. Um, the choices I made brought me to where I am today. And if I made different choices, I might not have my children. I definitely wouldn't have my grandchildren. I wouldn't have the life I have right now. So uh, no regrets. None. No, not one. So, okay. I'm going to go in and read my book. And... Uh, that's about it. Nothing much else going on. Maybe pay a couple bills. How's that sound? Is that exciting? I think it is too. So like, comment, subscribe, and share, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow. <laughs>